السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Uh, we'll continue from where I stopped in the previous lecture. This is going to be just one hour or basically 15 minutes. Okay. If you remember, we're talking about pressure measurement. Well, we mentioned about four different types barometer, loading gauge, okay. And then a uh, piezometer and uh, barometer, uh, mission barometer, okay, and manometer. We look at the first three cases and uh, I've started explaining the principle behind the YouTube manometer, okay, which is simply uh, like the pressure at the same elevation is the same. So we develop the pressure expression and then if the two, so I mean the two arms left and right, and then try to find any unknown. We looked at this example in the previous instance. And then now we have another one, which says for the pressure meter using the YouTube manometer. You have water at 10 degrees, which is the fluid in this pipe, and you have mercury as the manometer fluid. Mercury is used as the manometer fluid because like you measure higher pressures. Okay. It has higher density than water, so it can measure higher pressure than water or than most other liquids whose density is far far less than that of mercury so that is the uh, that is why we normally use mercury as the manometer li uh, liquid okay if the deflection is if the deflection delta h is 60 centimeter this is delta h okay which is 60 centimeter and the and l is 180 centimeter what is the gauge pressure at the center of the pipe which is p4 okay we generated the equation if you remember before we we generated the equation for p4 this is it okay where we equated the pressure at the right arm to be equal to the pressure at the left arm on the same elevation okay P2 is the height of the manometer liquid is mercury in this plus atmospheric pressure. In that question, they say gauge pressure. So the atmospheric pressure to be zero. Okay. And P3 is the height of water above 0.3, which is gamma WL plus P4. So these two are equal. So we can find P4. Okay. Atmospheric pressure is zero because we want to find the gauge pressure which is the pressure above atmospheric pressure. So starting at point one, we we'll work to point four using the ideas from what we explained. Okay, the fluid depth increases. And uh, so simply, yeah, like I said, P2, you have P1, which is atmospheric pressure and the pressure increases between one and two. So P1 is zero because it's atmospheric and delta H is already provided to be centimeter which is 0.6 which is the density of mercury okay so this is p2 then we move for p3 okay which is uh, find the pressure at 0.3 so then you the hydrostatic equation z2 equals z okay the hydrostatic equation then the pressure is the same for p2 and p3 then uh, p4 you just substitute P3 pressure decrease between three and four. Okay, between three and four. And, uh, which is P3 is the same as P2, and then this is omega L, uh, gamma L, gamma WL. Okay. And L is 180 centimeter, which is 1.8. So this is P4, which is 62.1 kilopascal gauge. So like I mentioned before, all that we did was to generate the pressure equal to 0.2 and 0.3 and equate the two, simple. Okay. Now we'll look at some instances where we'll be generating the pressure expression at different points, then and the principle of the manometer. Now, Types of manometer, you can have simple manometer and you have differential manometer. The simple manometer has only one gauge, 
okay, this is a gauge connected, simple manometer, and the pressures at point P and Q, which are the, sa the same elevation, are equal, okay? So how can we generate, how can we, if we want to find uh, pressure in this gauge, how can we find it? You simply write the pressure e expression at the two points at Q, you have nothing but air, which is atmos atmospheric pressure, okay? So you have atmospheric pressure only acting at P, P subscript P, you have this height of the manometer liquid, which we don't know, we can say gamma M, M for manometer liquid, and the height is X, okay? And then plus height of air above this manometer liquid, which is Y, okay? Let's say gamma, I don't know if it's air or we can call it, um, this is P plus, uh, call it gamma P one plus, okay, and the height is Y, and then plus the pressure in the gate, in the gate, which is P one plus, okay? So to find the pressure in the gauge here, we equate the pressures are P and Q. This P subscript Q, is equal to P subscript P. And when we equate the two, we can find here, okay? Don't forget, if we want to find pressure as gauge, then we have to say atmospheric pressure to zero because the gauge pressure is always reference to the atmospheric pressure, okay? If we refer, if we say gauge pressure, then the atmospheric pressure should be set to zero. And then you have differential manometer. So for the differential manometer, here you have PA and PV, PB. So here you have two gauges, okay? So the same way we did for the simple manometer. We look at a point where they have the same elevation and develop the pressure expressions for the left and right arms, okay? So if you look at point one here, you can stretch it. Let's call this point two. Okay, and let's develop the pressure expression point one, which is let's say P1. It's going to be the height of this fluid. Okay, the height H1. Okay, I call it gamma one H1, and then plus the pressure in the gauge here. Okay, which is PA. We do the same thing for point two. Okay, which is the height H2. Of this one liquid, so we can call it gamma two H two plus the height due to H three. Other liquid, okay, different from the first one. So let's call it gamma three because this there's the specific weight will be different. Remember, specific weight is density times acceleration due to gravity. The density when you have different fluids, they have different densities. This is gamma. H3 and then the pressure inside the gauge, which is PB. Okay, so re, re, remember P is equal to P2. Okay, so we want to find the difference. If PA is known, we can find PB. If PB is known, we can find PA and we can find the difference between the pressure in the gauges. That is either PA minus PB or PB minus PA, as the case may be. The most important thing is to generate the equations when you have equal heights, okay? And then whatever is the unknown, you can simply substitute and find the unknown. This is another example where you have simple manometers. Uh, we have to find the pressure at O in this case. We want to find the pressure at O, which is the gauge here, okay? In both cases, let's a first. Here you have, okay, we want to start with this. So you have different liquids because they are shared differently. You have this to be different from this, to be different from that, okay? So we generate the pressure equation at A and B and equate them. Simple. So what is the pressure expression at B? Simply pressure due to the height H2 and then the atmospheric pressure. 
if we want to find the pressure as gauge pressure, atmospheric pressure becomes zero. So we have just gamma, let's say gamma two H two. And this is equal to the pressure at the left wing, which here we can call it gamma one H one plus the pressure inside the gauge here. We can call it P O plus. Okay, simple. And if we want to find the pressure inside here, we make this the subject of the formula. Now, for the second part, here you don't have any liquid, you have air inside, okay? So air, that's atmospheric pressure, which is zero, okay? So here the pressure at B is zero, equal to the pressure at A. Pressure at A, let's call it gamma two, okay, for the liquid, gamma two for this one. The height of the liquid is H2 plus you have H1, okay, gamma 1 H1, another liquid or fluid, gamma 1 H1, then plus the pressure inside here, okay, which let's say PO plus, okay. So you can make the PO plus to be the subject of the filler, okay. Of course, if you are not finding the gauge pressure here, then atmospheric pressure will not be set at zero. You have, you have to use the exact value of the atmospheric pressure. Still on the differential manometer now. Okay, the previous one was a simple manometer. Now on differential manometer, write the manometer equation for the following. As we did before, you know, let's start with A. And we consider points one and two. Okay, and generate equations and make them equal. Let's start with point one. What is the manometer equation? I mean, what's the pressure acting here? It's simple, we add the heights because so, so it's going to be gamma B, or let me say gamma one. It's going to be R plus A plus Z. Okay plus the pressure inside this gauge, okay, PB, okay, and this is equal to, we'll find pressure at the other end, which is at point two, which is, uh, let's say, uh, gamma two now, gamma two, this liquid here is R, so R, and then plus another liquid, fluid which is the same as the fluid here gamma one you can see gamma one gamma one so it's the same fluid okay so gamma one but the height here is h simply h and then plus the pressure inside the gauge here which is pa okay so in this case you have pa you have pb so anyone that is unknown can be found okay and the difference between the two pressures can also be found now for the inverted differential manometer inverted you know when it is upside down the only difference here is that when it is inverted instead of adding we subtract because we go up okay so in this case let's start for point one for point one is going to be and then we subtract the height okay minus the manometer liquid here gamma one into the height is a plus r so we subtract rather than add. And this is equal to, this is the pressure at this point, point one. Okay, PV plus gamma one into H plus R. And it's not the pressure at point two. And the pressure at point two is equal to gamma uh, PA. That is the pressure here. Then we subtract the, the pressure due to the column of the fluid. Okay, so minus gamma one also into z plus h minus this is gamma 2 minus gamma 2 into r gamma 2 times r okay so this will give us the pressure at point 2 the pressure at point 2 is called the pressure at point 1 because they are on the same elevation okay so here we can find either pa or pb as the case may be whichever one is unknown okay Now this is an example which is says 
find the pressure difference between A and B. Okay, you are given weight of water, the uh, unit, unit weight of air to be 11.8 newton per square per cubic meter. Okay, we have pressure difference between A and B. Okay, between A and B, that is PA minus PB. Okay, so let's draw a horizontal line at H here so that we can find. We generate the pressure equation at this point, at that point, and they are equal. So, at this point, we will have, as I did before, PA, that is the pressure, and it is water that is inside, okay? Then minus the height due to this, this 60 centimeter of water, which is gamma, let's say W, and the height of water here, then minus the height due to the air column, which is gamma air, which is the height of the air column. And this is equal to PB, that's the pressure here. And the height of water here is 180, so minus gamma water times the height of water, which is 180. Same as H1. H1. Oh no, it's 180 plus 45 because it is water throughout. So 180 Okay, I will so when substituting it will be 180 plus 45, which is uh, 225 centimeter. So let's substitute values. So PA no minus unit weight of water. Unit weight of water is uh, density times name is 9810. Okay. 810. The height of water here is 60 centimeter. The meter is going to be 0.6. Then minus the height due to the air column, of the pressure of the air column, which is the unit weight of Air is 11.8 times the height of the air core 0.45 meters, and this is equal to PB minus unit weight of water 9810 times the height of water, which is 180, which is 1 1.8 plus 45, which is 0 0.45. Don't forget. We normally neglect the pressure due to air column. Okay, so if we so wish, we can neglect this term. Okay, which is the pressure due to the air column, which is very small. You can see the unit weight of air is 11.8. That of water is 9,810. 9, way, way higher than that of air. Okay, so that's why it is mathematically, I mean, um, accurate. I mean, to neglect the pressure due to the air column, okay? So when we do this, we want to find the difference in pressure between A and B, so we now say PA minus PB. So we now compute what is the value that we have here. So it's minus sixty point sixteen Pascal. Okay. If you want to change it, difference between A and B so that it will be P A minus P B. So it's going to be sixteen kilo Pascal. Okay. Sixteen kilo Pascal.
And this is another example. Uh, with a millimeter analysis, which says, what is the pressure of the air in the tank? Don't find the pressure of the air in this tank. Right? If L1 is equal to 40 centimeter, L2 equal 100, and L3 equal 80. Okay, the tank is pressurized with air. Assumptions were to neglect the pressure change in the air column. This is usual. You can see the air column here. Okay, so to neglect the pressure change in the air column, and we have to find the pressure, which is the kilopascal gauge. Okay, in the air, meaning we are to neglect the atmospheric pressure will be set to zero because we are using gauge pressure here. So we have point one and point two, which are the same elevation. So we move from point one to point two. The pressures are going to be the same. Pressure at point one is equal to pressure at point two. Okay. So how do we, when we go down, we add, when we go up, we subtract. Okay, so we start from this end. This is okay, which is zero because we want to find the pressure gauge. We want to find the gauge pressure. So we start from this end and move up to the where we have the air. Okay. Here P1. Okay. The pressure point one, which is by and large going to be the atmospheric pressure. Then we have the pressure due to the mercury column. Okay which is gamma M and L3, okay? Then this to the air column. So when we go up, we subtract, okay, gamma A, L2 now, okay? And then this point, we now go down again, okay? By L1, which is the oil now. We go down, we add, okay? Which is gamma O, L1. And at this point, this will give us the pressure at point two. Okay, so this is exactly what we have here. Okay, we started from this point. Okay, and P1, because it's atmospheric, is zero. So we now substitute the other values density, um, unit weight of mercury. Uh, this is zero. We take this to be zero as well because we neglect the pressure due to the air column. Okay, and the unit weight of as the unit weight of the oil, you can get it from the specific gravity because specific gravity is the unit weight of substance of water. Okay, L1 and L3 are all given, so we can find P2. Very simple. So we just substituted the values here and get 110 kilopascal gauge, which is the pressure of air here, which is very simple and very forward. Another example. So simply as you go down, you add, as you move up, you subtract because pressure increases down and decreases when you go up. And we mentioned before that the unit weight of liquid is far, far greater than that of gas, so we neglect the pressure okay exerted by gases by gas columns so this is the figure for this one okay and this is the problem statement measuring pressure with a multi-fluid uh, manometer the water in a tank is pressurized by air okay and pressure is measured by a multi-fluid manometer as shown here the tank located on a mountain at an altitude of 1,400 meter, where the atmospheric pressure is 85.6 kilopascal. Determine the air pressure in the tank if H1 and H2 and H3 are given. Okay, you should take the densities of water, oil, and mercury 1,850 and 13,600 kilogram per meter cube. So here we have pressure in a pressure, uh, the pressure in a pressurized water tank is measured by a multi-fluid manometer, and the air pressure in the tank is determined. Okay, and the assumption here is that the air pressure in the tank 
is uniform. That is, its variation with elevation is negligible due to its low density. Thus, we can determine the pressure at the water-air interface. This is the figure. We want to determine the pressure at the water-air interface, okay? Which will be at the same height here if you project it, okay? So we start from this point, okay, which is atmospheric pressure, which we can take to be zero, okay? So similar to what we did before, if you call this point two, okay? If you call it point two, so the pressure here is the pressure here because it is the same atmospheric pressure that is acting. So this is point two. Then when you go down, this is theory. When you go down, you add. Okay. You go down. You add. So you have the yeah, say P2, when you go down, you add, this is mercury plus gamma of my H3. When you go up to this point, which is two plus H1, which is oil, you subtract, that is plus gamma oil, with the height is H3, plus H1, okay, H3 plus H1. And then when you come here, this point, at this point, when you come here, uh, you encounter H1 and H2. H1 for oil and H2 for water. So if you look at what we have here in the X, okay, we have P2, which is the atmospheric pressure, being equal to P1, which is the pressure here, okay, the pressure at the air interface, plus the pressure due to the water, which is at this point, plus, which is at this point, due, due, due to the water flow. So that's why you have uh, rho water gh1 okay and then at this point you have oil okay h2 so you add it add oil and then you go up which is for the mercury which is g uh, h3 okay and this gives the pressure here which is p2 okay so p2 when you rearrange it, P2 plus the pressure mercury, okay, P2 plus the pressure due to the mercury height, H3, is equal to the pressure here plus the pressure due to the water column, H1, and due to the mercury column, H2. Okay, so what we are looking for here is P1. Okay. P2 is atmospheric, which is uh, already provided. Okay, here we are not finding gate, we are finding absolute pressure. So if we are finding the gate pressure, we will set the atmospheric pressure to be zero. Okay, but if we are finding the absolute pressure, we will utilize the value of the atmospheric pressure. So that is why here we did not set the value to be zero. We utilized the atmospheric pressure at that height, which is different from the standard atmospheric pressure. Standard atmospheric pressure is 101.3 um, kilopascal. Okay, at sea level, 
and this is at an altitude of about 1,400. Yeah, 1,400 meters. So that's why that the pressure has reduced. The higher you go, the less the atmospheric pressure. Okay. Here, yeah, this is now the absolute pressure. You can leave it as just kilopascal, or you can write absolute to indicate absolute. But if it is gauge, usually, although if you write the atmospheric pressure to be zero, it's, it is understood that the pressure you are going to find is going to be gauge. Okay, but more often than not, it's good to indicate at the end. Let's say kilopascal, and then you write gauge. Now is the summary of the manometer equations, okay, which is the gauge pressure analysis. We use this equation for a manometer that is being applied to measure gauge pressure. And the second one, which is this one, okay, you know, when you go down, you add, when you go up, you subtract. And for the differential analysis, we use this for a manometer that is being applied to measure differential pressure in a pipe with a flowing fluid. Okay, also use an example to demonstrate the application of this using the piezometric head. Okay. And then the next part is pressure transducer. Okay, pressure transducer or PT is a device that converts pressure to an electrical signal. For example, okay, in figure 3.18 in your book, which you should go and check, okay, it shows a strain gauge pressure transducer. Pressure transducers have many advantages, such as the following. Okay, in general, pressure transducers have high levels of accuracy as compared to other devices, such as building tube gauges and manometers. They have higher levels of accuracy, and pressure transducer can be used to measure gauge pressure, absolute vacuum, or potential pressure. So it can, it is, um, I mean, it has, it can measure all sorts of pressures. While like building gauge, you can only measure the absolute pressure. Uh, sorry, the, for the building gauge, you measure the gauge pressure. Even for the um, uh, manometer, uh, you you can measure the gauge and absolute, okay? But then the pressure transducer, it can measure all sorts of pressure, absolute pressure, vacuum pressure, or differential pressure. Most pressure trans, uh, transducers can measure, uh, can measure pressure as a function of time and can be applied to electronic data logging, meaning it can measure dynamic pressure, okay, which varies with time. And you can log it, meaning you can like get the values logged into a particular system online, okay. The pressure transducer is available for almost any pressure range you want to measure, meaning whether small pressures or high pressures. So it can take care of, you know, extreme ranges. And pressure transducers also have some disadvantages, such as the force. Definitely because of that, uh, you, you can see it. It's like uh, it takes care of all the disadvantages of most of the pressure measuring, uh, measuring devices we mentioned before. So definitely it will be costlier, meaning it is more expensive, higher cost. And it is longer to set up, longer set up times because they are more complicated. And uh, in general, pressure transducers need to be calibrated and used carefully. Okay. So this is uh, where we stop for this. Uh, as far as pressure measurement is concerned, where we considered you know, good uh, gauge, okay, as well as uh, manometer, barometer, and the piezometer, okay. We look at all these and some of the simple ways, uh, simple examples that they can be applied, okay. Now we look at forces on plane surfaces. Forces on plane surfaces. We mentioned that pressure is simply the compressive force acting by unit area 
that okay so here we'll look at let's say pressure of fluids on plane surfaces and make some derivations and some computations here and there so forces on plane surfaces here you have uniform pressure distribution okay you have this plane surface you have uniform pressure distribution acting on it which you know from your knowledge of statics you can uh, this uniform pressure can be simplified into a resultant force acting you remember the uniformly distributed load udl okay in statics okay when 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 beam this is simple beam roller and a hinge okay and you have udl this can be transformed into just a resultant force acting by a multi, you know, this is let's say omega, which is in let's say kilonewton per meter. Okay, so the span is you change it into a point load by multiply. This is omega L, isn't it? When you multiply by the length, you have it, it as the resultant force acting. Okay, so the same way here, this uniform pressure distribution can, uh, which is as a result of the force acting. Okay. You can represent it with the resultant force, with the line of action going through the center of pressure in this case. Okay, center of pressure. So center of pressure in this case will be equivalent or the same as center of gravity. Okay, center of pressure, but we'll be calling it CP, center of pressure. So forces acting on plane surfaces. Okay, we have hydrostatic pressure distribution. Imagine you have a tank, okay, in which this is inclined. So the hydrostatic pressure distribution acting, okay, in this case, which in this case is uniform, uniform pressure distribution, but in this case it is non-uniform, uh, is uh, or uniformly varying, okay, okay. So it will not act at the center, per se, okay, because of the pressure distribution. You can it's higher here. That's at deeper part. You have more pressure, okay. So definitely, if this is Right. For center of mass of this, point, then the center of pressure will be displaced, will be moved, okay? Because that is where the resultant force will be acting. The resultant pressure force will be acting somewhere here, not at the center, because it is the pressure force is non-uniform. It is higher towards the deeper side, okay? So this is the center of pressure. So the center of pressure is below the center of gravity in this case. So, and the line of action of the center of pressure, or oh, uh, yeah, the line of action is below the line of action of the centroid. Now, forces on plane surfaces, driving force and line of action. Okay, driving force and line of action. If you have a plane surface inside inside water, okay. Types, vertical gates, inclined gates, and curved gates. Gates are simply hydraulic structures that are used to open or close, you know, passage of water. Okay. And uh, here you have the body, and this is like the pressure acting. Okay. Of course, the deeper you go, the more the pressure. So that's why you have the resultant pressure force acting at this point. Okay. And uh, this is the centroid. This is the centroid of the body. And this is the center of pressure. Okay. This is the center of pressure. Which by CP, and this is the centroid of the body. Here we are considering an element A. Okay, and we want to analyze the pressure force acting on the body. Okay, if you look at the element, here is gamma y sine alpha because it is inclined. See the angle inclination alpha. Okay. Um, gamma y sine alpha. Okay. So
Now I will stop here uh, so that in the next class we'll continue from here. Okay, so make sure you read up to lecture for our major one up to up just before lecture eight. That is after major. major. Okay, uh, just before lecture eight. And then um, our next class on Tuesday will continue from this. Assalamu alaikum. Doctor, can you hear me?